welcome to another episode of Drew's Brews Reviews. Uh, the one I'm doing today, I'm very excited to bring to you because I wanted to do it actually a month ago before I came down with an illness, so I'm actually feeling better and that is fantastic, which is going to make this beer taste, I think, all the better for it. Um, so what I'm looking at and what I always seem to look at every third or fourth beer is another stone project. Now this one, I'm only going to say this once, uh, is part of their stochasticity project, uh, here to by further known as Grapefruit Slam IPA. So the overall project is known as that, and this is the first part of that actual project of experimental beers. This is a science beer for sciencey people who are beer enthusiasts. That is according to the actual stone people themselves. They said this is an enthusiast beer, this is not for the casual beer drinkers. Um, I think the reason they're, they're saying this is because the bitterness of this is supposed to be quite high. It is at 95 IBUs. Now that is not anywhere near the highest IBU beers out there, but it is definitely on the high side and this is definitely going to be an extremely bitter beer. Um, to give you a reference point, if you know Stone's Ruination IPA, that's 100 plus. That's well over 100 IBUs, so this is actually going to be a little bit less than, than that. So if you can handle Ruination, um, there's no reason that you shouldn't be able to handle this. But I'm saying that having not actually tried it yet. so. I'm not going to get ahead of myself. A few facts about this particular beer from Stone. Um, the cost of it is $9, which is fairly standard coming from them for the bomber size bottle. The ABV of this is 8.2%. Uh, the temperature I'm going to serve this at is around 55 to 60 degrees, so just a little bit under room temperature. And the availability for this is actually listed as rotating. Uh, I'm assuming this is going to be kind of like the Enjoy By series where they will have it released at kind of odd, staggered times throughout the year. With all that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and give this a pour. Now because this is a bomber size bottle, I'm going to experiment a bit with the beer glasses. Uh, the standard one I'm going to go with is the tulip glass, but I'm also going to pour it into a pint and sniffer just to see which one is preferable to drink this lovely beer out of. As per usual from Stone, just absolute perfect, like single finger, white fluffy head. On top of that IPA, pretty nice color, a little kind of pale gold amber color. A little bit paler than some of the, the other IPAs I've had from them recently, but absolutely crystal clear. Fantastic looking IPA. I love the, the look of, of Stone's IPAs. So I'm going to go ahead and give this one a smell and see what I get out of this. I'm guessing a little bit of grapefruit and a whole hell of a lot of hop. Alright, yeah, the, the aroma of this. Surprising in some ways and not in others. Uh, not overly hoppy, a little bit floral, a little bit soapy with just a hint of like a citrusy grapefruit, but actually it's a fairly subdued aroma. I'm kind of surprised by this. I really expect it in your face, just almost smelling the, the polony hops, the bitterness of it, the just blasty in the face. There's a little bit of a sweet resin too in the background, but overall the aroma, uh, not overpowering, not overly strong, at least out of the uh, tulip glass here. So. All right, I'm going to give this one a taste and see how it goes down. All right, definitely bitter. No doubt about that. Um, I've had some pretty high IBU bitterness beers. The way that this tastes comes across as a much higher IBU than what it actually is. Like, knowing that this is actually less than Ruination is surprising to me. Ruination comes across to me as a much more drinkable beer as far as that's concerned. Whereas this is very much in your face hops. Yeah, and a lot of the bitterness is really in the finish. It's a nice, resiny, toffee, sweet, malt beginning that has a nice carbonation, that creaminess that goes through. And then just really kind of the finish dries up. It leaves like this pretty pleasant bitterness dancing on your tongue. And it, if anything, that's the, the grapefruit there, it'd be more grapefruit and rind because this is a grapefruit peel that they used in it as opposed to, I guess, chunks of grapefruit. So that's why that grapefruitiness isn't really coming through quite as much and is more of a, the bitter fruit peel um, than the sweet, tart uh, grapefruit. This is a much more hop forward beer where the hops are featured more so than the, the fruity flavors. Uh, a lot of the beers that I've been having lately seem to want to overemphasize the fruit in some ways and make it a very syrupy sweet kind of IPA, whereas this definitely lets you know that this is an IPA first and a grapefruit slash fruity beer second. Uh, as I do have more glasses here and more of this to try, I'm gonna go ahead, pour this in the other glasses and just see how the experience changes if it does at all. 
Okay, so I have tried this beer out of the three different glasses here. Uh, really interesting experience, actually. The pint glass gave me the best aroma, I think, out of the three of them. The grapefruit and kind of that nice bitter hop and resin and the sweetness all mixed together really well out of the pint glass. The, the pint glass backs the sweetness off just a little bit, so if you like your IPAs a little less malty, that'd be the way to go. If you want a little bit more of the sweeter resin, I think the Tulip is the superior experience and I wouldn't really even bother with the snifter. I personally like it. Anyone who's a hop head I think will like this. I don't think it's going to excel and become a favorite beer. It's not really that experimental, I'm, so it's not really doing anything new, but it doesn't really have to. I mean, again, it's $9. That's the great thing about Stone is you're not spending a whole ton of money to try a lot of their products, and if you don't happen to like them, it's no big deal. This one I would give recommended for anybody who's who's into hops, who you know loves their IPAs, a little soapy bitter with um, some sweeter resin, likes likes a bit of malt backbone to be in their IPAs. If you're not really into that, then this would be on the try if side. But I think overall, I have to give this a recommended. It's it's borderline between the two. So for Drew's Beer Reviews and Grapefruit Slam IPA. I say cheers. Go to DrewsBrewsReviews.com for more video and written beer reviews. Follow me on Twitter at DrewBrewReviews, leave off the first two S's for savings, for the latest on big beer releases and PA events.